someone who has close ties inside Iran is with us. Human Majdi is the author of the Ayatollah Begs to Differ. He was once a translator for Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and is also related to Iran's former president, Khatami. He joins us now from New York. Good to see you. To see so you when you friends. hear of this latest information about uh, the besiege who are conducting these raids on residences, as we just heard from Ivan Watson, what's your initial reaction? Well, I think it's to be expected. I don't think they were going to put up, they didn't put up with the uh, street protests, mm -hmm. and uh, the street protests morphed into this chanting every night from the rooftops, which was happening every, every single night, uh, increasing in, in, in the number of uh, people who were participating. Mm -hmm. um, even on the streets, actually, people were coming out of their homes on the streets shouting Allahu Akbar. Um, and it's very easy to identify because in any specific neighborhood, you can kind of hear where they're coming from, the chants and uh, the basij. I'm not surprised at all that they're going mm. into people's homes. So I guess I, I'm thinking the conventional wisdom may have been that since the numbers have dwindled of people protesting in the streets, even though there were still some folks who were taking to the rooftops that perhaps the government would feel like, well, we've won. We don't necessarily need to carry out any more force against these protesters. But in fact, just the opposite is happening here. Yeah, I don't think, I think in Why? Iran, in Iran, everything is, uh, is, is slightly different than the way conventional wisdom would indicate. Um, first of all, they, they made it very clear at the very beginning, when I say they, the authorities and the government that is in power, made it very, very clear that they were not going to put up with any vocal protests or silent protests, either kind of protest. Silent protest meaning the people who came out on the streets and weren't speaking or weren't shouting slogans, or the vocal protest which is happening every night. Um, and as your reporter pointed out, this is something that happened in 1979, although I think it's very dangerous to make analogies between now and 1979. Um, one shouldn't really think that there's a real revolution brewing in Iran. Mm -hmm. This is people being very angry at something that was taken away from them in their minds. And even Dr. Larijani, who's a conservative, uh, an arch conservative and is a speaker of parliament and very close to the Supreme Leader, he has admitted that uh, a great number of Iranians believe that the election was fraudulent. So it's not surprising, but once the authorities made this determination to take these protests off the street and to silence the critics, mm -hmm. Um, they want order. They want law and order restored. And then whatever negotiations are going on in the background, uh, behind the scenes, between Ayatollah Rafsanjani, who's a very powerful man who's opposing the government's stance right now. He's the number, sec really the second most powerful man in Iran. Um, Dr. Larijani plays a role in this. Uh, Musavi himself, the losing candidate in this case, mm -hmm. uh, President Khatami, former President Khatami. Um, all these people are, are important people who are playing a role right now. It's not very public, and I would say that even they don't know how it's going to end up. Well, what they do know is that the government does not want this to continue and will use any, any means it has to stop it. If there was a feeling the government's uh, strength was weakening, especially as a result of the protests that took place in defiance of the Ayatollah, and President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad coming out as recently as uh, today, saying once again that the U.S. needs to stop interfering. He says, quote, he, speaking of President Obama, who spoke of reforms and changes, why did he interfere and comment in a way that disregards convention and courtesy? Is this Ahmadinejad trying to restore or reclaim some of the strength that some believe may have been weakened during these protests and blaming it on the U.S. as interfering, even though the U.S. has said very little? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, everyone in Iran, in the leadership, um, believes that the U.S., when I say the leadership, the current leadership, mm -hmm. believes that the U.S. has had a hand in this. Um, and they're amassing the evidence that they think they have that the U.S. has had a hand in trying to create a velvet revolution at a minimum, regime change. Um, and President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad knows that his supporters, and including some of the Musavi supporters, yeah. might believe this. Um, mm -hmm. Iranians have had a bad history with the, the United States. They don't believe a lot of, of what the United States says. They don't believe a lot of what... Uh, they don't believe in the foreign policy of the United States when it comes to Iran. They have a bad experience from the Iran-Iraq war, most recently, where the United States supported Saddam Hussein. Um, so it's a very good way for the Iranian government, if they want to persuade their people not to demonstrate and not to challenge Ahmadinejad, to kind of deflect attention away from their own internal problems a little bit right now and say, this is being engineered in the United States. And they, they're going to amass the evidence. I'll give you an example. Um, I think the film 
uh, the stoning of Soraya M uh, opened yesterday, I right. think, uh, across the country here. Even though it's purely coincidental that this movie is opening, and we all know it's coincidental, is opening now uh, in America. It's a very anti-Iranian film in many ways. Uh, I haven't seen it, but yeah, that's it, it was advertised months ago. Months ago, well exactly. Well before this well election, ago. that it would but be they opening at this day. Exactly, but they will point to that. They will point to that as yeah. evidence that months ago they were planning a velvet revolution. Okay. And some people will believe that. I mean, it's just uh, unfortunate, but it is it is true that some people will believe that. It's one of the reasons they're kicking out the foreign press. It's one of the yeah. reasons they're, they have a tight control over the media.